So we've talked a lot over these past couple of days on what the Baltimore Ravens need to do to secure a victory in advance to the AFC Championship. So it's known uh, what's in front of the Baltimore Ravens and everything that they need to accomplish to get to their next goal and their next destination. But we also need to have the uncomfortable conversation about things that the Baltimore Ravens need to avoid, things that they absolutely cannot afford to do against the Houston Texans. Now, I couldn't have that conversation alone. So what I decided to do was bring on a very special guest for the first time ever. So this is history. Team Keep It Clean, give our special guest a very, very warm welcome like I know you will. Team, keep it clean. Very, very, very special guest in the building. This is, oh yeah, yeah, this is your first time being on here. So mm -hmm. this is uh, the inaugural, uh, well, I said that word wrong, but it's okay. Y'all know what I meant. Uh, it's my guy, Sam Najoku uh, from Ravens Talk Podcast. Y'all check him out on YouTube. Check him out on Twitter. Check him out <laughs> on Instagram because if you on Ravens YouTube, you probably don't seen him before. But you, if you on Ravens Instagram, you definitely done seen him before, especially with all the memes that he be dropping <laughs> after every Ravens game, in between Ravens games and whatnot. Yeah, he he be on fire with it. So I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, let everybody know about your stuff before we get into everything. Yeah, yeah. So like you mentioned, you can find me on uh, YouTube at Ravens Talk Podcast, on Twitter, Ravens Talk Pod, Instagram, uh, Ravens Talk Podcast. I'm always dropping memes, like you said. Very fun to do, especially around this time where the Ravens are winning and all the rivals yeah. are losing. So uh, <laughs> good times ahead. Yeah, if you want to have a laugh, I don't know Instagram. I'll definitely have stuff for you. Now, appreciate that. Now, what's interesting is that I remember years ago, um, years ago before we linked up, I, I uh, would see you on Twitter sometimes. And I'd be like, man, this dude, he sure got some takes. He got some powerful takes. Uh, but as I've witnessed it this year, um, so much of what you say, it, it ends up coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I, I don't expect this game to be close from the Baltimore Ravens. I, I think they're going to blow this team out the water. Or is they're going to win by at least 14. And I'll be looking like whether it was about the 49ers, about the Dolphins, i would be looking around like, ah, <laughs> I don't know about that one. And then it ends up happening like, whoa. And then even um, not only just takes about the actual games, but about the business side as well uh because i remember when dalvin cook first got released you were like oh yeah this this baltimore ravens all day that would that would be such a baltimore ravens move mm -hmm. and i was thinking um i could see them doing it but i, I don't know at this point in the season could they i mean they they got obviously gus and justice but would they add a dalvin cook to all the ravens like really in that that mold were they really looking to get even better than they already are even at this point in the season and they went and did it uh, and there have been, of course, a lot more takes throughout the year that uh, you've been spot on about. But So I, I appreciate your work. I appreciate your craft. Uh, I appreciate the fact that sure. you are uh, literally um, a jack of all trades because you'll talk about the moves that the Ravens make, but you'll, uh, you'll talk about the games, you'll talk about your expectations, but then you'll talk about the film too because you, you, you watch your film and you see uh, different things about the opposing team that Ravens could take advantage of or that they could possibly take advantage of when it comes to the Ravens. So I, I appreciate everything that you do. And I, I'm glad that we could finally, because I remember um, I had talked to you about it a, a while back. I was like, I, I'm going to bring you on. I didn't know when it was going to be, but I knew it was going to be. So I'm glad that we able to finally do this. I, I appreciate you coming through. Man. Appreciate you, man. No, for sure, man, for sure. Now, um, big game coming up. Uh, this is now the biggest game of the season for the Baltimore Ravens because – this is it. Like, ain't no more like, all right, yeah, we'll get better next week or we'll make some adjustments. No, no, no. This is it. You either win or you lose. Um, and your season continues or your season is completely over. And they're facing a, a Texans team that's coming in hot after beating the Browns, what, 45 to what, 14 or whatever the score was. It was ugly. It was um, they dismantled them big time. Uh, we know what the Ravens need to do to get the job done. But what are some things that the Baltimore Ravens cannot afford to do if they want to get out of here with a win? Yeah, well, there's two things, uh, one on each side, actually. So on the offensive yeah. side, you can't start slow. Mm. If you're a Ravens team, you got to try and make sure you build that momentum you gain when you beat the Dolphins back in New Year's Eve. 
go and start fast. Do what you're doing. And usually do. Don't go crazy with it, but definitely for the most part, do not start slow because if the Texans get an early lead, the momentum can shift. And you all know in the playoffs, momentum is everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so for, on the offensive side, definitely start fast. Do what you've been doing all season long. Uh, let the defense dictate what you do and attack it hard. Uh, the weakness on the other side of the ball. On defense, don't do what the Cleveland Browns did. Don't stay, okay, C.J. Stroud is a guy who struggled against man coverage, so our game plan is to play man coverage the entire day. You play mostly one high safety or cover three most of the day, and C.J. Stroud tore them apart, did not give them a chance to breathe, and before you knew it, it was all over. So uh, luckily for the Ravens, they do a good job of having multiple looks, definitely confusing uh, their opposing quarterback to the line of scrimmage, something that the Browns did not do against C.J. Stroud. And against a rookie quarterback, that's very surprising. Uh, so as long as the Ravens pretty much do what they've been doing all season, I see no reason why the Ravens can't come out here with the victory. Hmm. Okay. Those are really, really good points. Now, if we go back uh, to week one, Baltimore Ravens, they obviously took care of business against the Texans uh, in that first game of the season. Um, but what are some of the big differences that you see, uh, whether it be with the Houston Texans or even with the Baltimore Ravens uh, going into this game? Yeah, well, it was CJ Stroud's first game. He was a rookie. Mm -hmm. Of course. So uh, one good thing I think that really set C.J. Stroud up well and something that the Ravens might need to take in consideration is that uh, they didn't really hide C.J. Stroud. I know they tried to get the running game going a little bit, but really uh, D'Amico Ryans put the ball in C.J. Stroud's hand and let him try and compete and get a win. Of course, they came up short. But what they gained from that was the experience to know that they can go up against one of the better defenses in the league at the time mm -hmm. and uh, really uh, do some damage. Didn't show too much on the scoreboard. But I saw some things from C.J. Stroud, mostly uh, poisonous and ability to read defenses. Uh, two things that a lot of quarterbacks that Ravens have gone against in this season have not had. So uh, that's one thing. The C.J. Stroud's first game up to now. Now he's his second postseason game. So expect yeah. a more fine-tuned uh, QB uh, for the Texans. On the Ravens' side, look, the defense is firing on cylinders. I think that Mike McDonald, especially as early as last season, He's finally got the pieces. He knows what to do with them. He's found a way to get Kyle Hamilton in different uh, formations, different looks, different positions. And that's really been the key to getting this defense from dominant to historically dominant, I think. So Kyle Hamilton's health is a huge factor. I think he'll play in this game. And what he's able to do with them, Mike McDonald, I should say, uh, is going to pay huge dividends because I think his ability to shake things up in the line of scrimmage and make CJ Stout think just a second or two longer than anticipated will well, give the defense the opportunity to make some plays. Oh, those are really, really good points. And you talked about Kyle Hamilton and his impact, him just being a difference maker. I wanted to ask you two players for the Baltimore Ravens, one on each side. I mean, you could throw in special teams if you want as well, but one on each side. Um, who do you think needs to be? And we'll exclude Lamar Jackson because that's an obvious, but I was going to do, do it. I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> oh, okay. And I you wasn't know what? So, okay, so we'll exclude both Lamar. Well, you wasn't going to choose him anyway, but and we'll exclude mm -hmm. Kyle Hamilton and Roquan Smith on defense, too. Okay. That'll make it that much harder. That's that's, that's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, on offense, I'm going to say Ronnie Stanley. Oh, Ronnie Stanley oh. can get his act together, and he's shown in recent weeks that he's back to form, but now he's got two or three weeks off, healthy. The knee and ankle should feel all that much better. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Texans are really known to have a huge uh, pass rush, but if they can keep Ronnie Stanley alone and not have a fullback, running back, tight end, the chip, or hold that side of the line of scrimmage, that's going to open some things up for this offense, have them do things that they might not be able to do if they need to keep a guy or two back to help out uh, Ronnie Stanley on his end. So Ronnie Stanley's performance, seeing how he does, because I know D'Amico Ryans isn't going to be a contained type of guy. I expect them to attack the line of scrimmage. If you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us at our best, is what I'm assuming the Texans are going to go out with. Mm -hmm. So... Expect Ronnie Stanley to be tested. And if he passes that test, it could be a big day for the offense. On the defensive side, I was going to say Brandon Stevens. He's oh. been the guy that has been solidifying that defensive backfield. Mm -hmm. Marlon Humphrey didn't practice on Tuesday, so we don't know whether or not he's going to be at 100%. I assume he's going to be ready to go because he was going to be able to go after that Dolphins game. So give these guys, this defensive backfield, a chance to really make some plays, solidify uh, the side of the ball, wherever uh, they put Brandon Stevens and really force C.J. Stroud to make decisions and good ones because if he's in a little off of the football, Brandon Stevens and company can make him pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Brandon Stevens, I've been just amazed at Brandon Stevens this year 
because the the first couple of years they were a bit shaky, and he reminded me um, of Chuck Clark to where they're not bad players, they're not mm -hmm. bad players at all, but they just struggled to make the play. They will be around the ball, they'll be in the area where the play was being made at, but they just wouldn't make the play. Uh, and I was wondering, like, if he was just if if he was going to plateau, and, and that was going to be it. But this year, he's been making the plays. Uh, right. So I, I really love Brandon Stevens, just how he's grown uh, as a player uh, this year. He's taken a, a huge, huge, huge step uh, forward for Baltimore Ravens and really just for his own career personally. Now, um, with all that being said, game is in a couple of days. Uh, before I get your game predictions... How do you feel about the whole rust versus rest? You think these Baltimore Ravens are going to be rusty at all? You think they're going to come out a little bit slow? How, how you think uh, them resting is going to possibly impact or affect them? Or do you think it just really ain't even no big deal? Uh, well, John Harbaugh probably said it best. You know, anybody who gets the first round by isn't telling the league, okay, we don't want the first round by. There's huge benefits to having rest. You see it with these players that were injured and are now practicing, getting ready to play in the division around. So mm -hmm. I don't buy too much into the rest versus rust thing, although there is some statistics that will probably back that up. I think the Ravens are going to be fine. I think one thing that John Harbaugh does very well, probably better than any head coach in the league, is adapting. You saw it last time when the Ravens were in London and lost to Jacksonville Jaguars. They struggled. So this time around against the Tennessee Titans, they go to London early. They, they practice early. They do things differently to try and get a better outcome. So John Harbaugh has done that this time, practicing in the stadium, practicing in game live type of atmospheres, situations, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I think the Ravens will be ready for this game. I think they're going to be dialed up and ready to go, and they're laser focused. I have not seen Lamar Jackson this focused in his entire career. Of course, Roquan Smith, even though he's only been here a short time, it seems to always be focused. So perhaps <laughs> Lamar Jackson's leaning on that a little bit for inspiration. But yeah, this team seems dialed in, and they're not going to let uh, the Texans uh, come in there and, and beat them due to rust. I love it. Now, uh, in closing, um, how do you feel like this game is going to go? What do you think is going to happen? And if you have an exact score prediction, cool. If you don't, that's fine as well. But how do you think this was going to turn out? Uh, normally, I want to give you a score prediction, but because we're cool, I'm going to give you one. Uh, <laughs> I think the Ravens are in line to dominate this game, honestly. I think the difference between the Ravens and the Browns, again, we mentioned it, the Browns' game plan coming into this on defense was – was faulty. You should not have done the bare minimum. Very base defense against C.J. Stroud. Mm -hmm. Even though C.J. Stroud, again, has struggled against man coverage, that's the playoffs. You 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 put your best foot forward. You you use the weapons that you have at your disposal. I think the Browns didn't do a good job of that. I don't think Mike McDonald makes that mistake. I think they're going to see a lot of movement at the defensive front, mm -hmm. a lot of movement on the linebackers and what have you. They're going to really confuse C.J. Stroud out there and force him to make decisions. If they lose this game, it's because C.J. Straub became one of the best quarterbacks in the league overnight. Now, he's great now, but he's still a rookie, and I think the Ravens take advantage. So I think the Ravens win this game. Uh, let's go 35-17. to 17. I think the Ravens dominate in this game and, and push their ticket to the AFC Championship. Okay. Hey, I, I would love that. I would love a nice, uh, comfortable win, uh, especially as a Baltimore Ravens fan. But either way, as long as they come out of there with the win. Sam, sure. I, I appreciate you. Appreciate you coming through. Appreciate everything you do for the Baltimore Ravens community as a whole uh, because you, you keep us engaged. You ask thought-provoking questions. And you got, again, the takes, be, they be spot on, man. They be spot on. Initially, when I see it, I say, whoa, but <laughs> hey, they, they end up being spot on. And we, we appreciate all the memes, too. Uh, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Us. As the well. hot takes are, are great until they're not correct. So, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll take the streak that I'm on right now for sure. But, you know, uh, save me, give me some grace if things don't go my way. But I think for sure these takes are going to be pretty spot on, at least for this season. All right. Sounds good. So, team, keep it clean. Uh, make sure you subscribe uh, to him, his YouTube channel, Ravens Talk Podcast. And I'll leave the link to everything, to his YouTube, to his Twitter, to his Instagram, all down below in the description so y'all can check him out. So, Sam, appreciate your time once again. And team, keep it clean. I'll see y'all in the next video. We out.